praise the Lord everyone I want to share a video with you today just a testimony my testimony what's on my heart such a beautiful beautiful day today so I thought I'd walk and pray and walk and testify and I just want to share with you look at this beautiful day such a beautiful day but I just want to share with you a thought I was thinking about how when we're in sin you know we're lost we're in sin we're spiritually dead and as the Lord begins to draw us and minister to us and open our eyes and the eyes of our heart how the scales fall off our eyes and it talks about in Acts 9 how the scales came off of the Apostle Paul's eyes and I begin to think about the scripture where Peter said that the things that are in secret and dark are revealed to us and the day star shines down in the secret places of our heart and he begins to open our eyes and the Bible says that when you're lost in sin and you're spiritually dead that you cannot understand the things of God that they're spiritually discerned the Holy Spirit has to quicken that word to open up your understanding and the word of God says that no man can come unless the Spirit draws them and I'm so thankful that the Lord draws us. He opens up our understanding. He opens up the eyes of our heart. And I'm so thankful. According to Second Peter chapter 1, he said, This precious faith has been given to you, and that every man has a measure of faith, a measure of grace. In another part of the Word of God, it says a measure of grace. So he gives everybody an opportunity because he is justice and he is fair and he don't want any to perish but have everlasting life but it comes down to the fact that salvation is a choice to serve the Lord is a choice and many do not choose to serve the Lord they choose to do their own things their own way and there's consequences when you do things your own way because the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. And I just praise Him today. And so my testimony, I got saved when I was eight years old. Got filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. My parents quit going to church for a while. So I didn't have that steadiness in my life. I didn't have that coach in my life. Um, it was kind of like a... My relationship with the Lord was kind of here and kind of there. And I didn't have that like Sunday school class and things like that. So my parents ended up getting back in church when I was 13. They ended up getting back in church and um, coming back to the Lord faithfully and, and, and being in church faithfully. And I understand the world thinks that church is not everything. And they see the hypocrites in the church and things like that. But there's real churches. There's real preachers. There's real men and women of God that preach under the anointing. So if I say church, I'm talking about the real church, a good church. And I know it's more than just a building. The church is within. So I just want to clarify that because people that are in the world... They think that you don't have to go to church. But it's important to go to the house of God to sit under an anointed man and woman of God because they speak into your life. They are a covering. They, they have the anointing to be a shepherd, to pastor you, and to uh, speak into your life. And their strength in numbers. And when God's children come together, we assemble together, and the Lord begins to move um, there's strength in numbers so church is important but there's church at home there's church praise God where to be the church and to go wherever God leads us so and I want to talk to you about how well I guess you could say um, in a sense from 8 to 14 my relationship with the Lord was kind of up and down you know it's, that seed was planted. The Holy Spirit was given to me. But I didn't exercise it. I didn't grow in it. Um, so, But when I was 14, my parents started going to church. And uh, they would talk to me about the Bible and the Word of God. And I got good anointed Sunday school. 
So I started learning to pray, to read my Bible, to walk with the Lord. And he began to correct me and guide and lead me into all truth and all righteousness. So I began to grow. And Jesus said that our faith starts out like a mustard a mustard seed. It's the tiniest of all seeds but grows and flourishes into beautiful herbs and trees that the birds of the air can come and lodge in. And that's the way we are. We grow in God. And He takes us from faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength. And we grow in Him, in our prayer life, in, in our word with Him, in our prayer language. We grow in our faith. We grow in the character of God. And that's why he said, let us make men in our in our image, in the image of God. Because he is love. He is joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And we're to be like him, to be a reflection of him. He told Moses, you're a stimulitude of me. And I, I want him to shine in my life and reach to the dark places. And in this dark time that we're in. So as I began to grow in the Lord, and He began to mature me, and then uh, as a teenager, you know, 18, 19, the Lord, well, at 18, the Lord really began to use me, and really began to use me in spiritual gifts, and prayer, and fasting, and preaching, and evangelizing, things like that, but... I chose um, I chose the, the way of the world, the way of flesh. You know, my husband came into my life at that time, and he was not saved. Um, he was not saved. And, I mean, I just really cared about him. And um, I allowed that to put a hindrance in my life. And there's been, you know, many years that my relationship with the Lord was up and down. And there'd be times that, you know, I would get close to the Lord. And there'd be times I'd stray, I'd back up. Kind of reminds me of when Jesus said a sower went out to sow seed. And some was thrown among the rocks. And it did not have much depthness. It didn't get its roots real good in Jesus and the Word. So when things come, offenses come, they were offended by and by. And that kind of reminds me of me and offenses and things that would set me back. And, you know, my past, I was kind of bound by my past and the fact that, you know, I'd kind of been up and down. And, you know, you kind of get church hurt and people want to beat you over the head with the Bible instead of loving you back to life. And people don't want to preach deliverance and truth. They would rather just call you names and put you down, but there is real, there is a real men and women of God out there that will love you back to life, that will preach under the anointing, that will convict you, but yet deliver you, so, and, so the Lord has sent real people into my life, you know, to encourage me, he's begin to mold and make me, and in 2017, my husband and I um, got remarried. He just, he went through a time. He just, you know, he just didn't want to serve the Lord. And he just didn't want to live for God. And the Bible says, what does darkness have? What does light have to, uh, fellowship with darkness? And the Bible warns and tells you not to be uh, unequally yoked. Not to be unequally yoked. And it just caused uh, problems because we, we, you know, as I said, I'd got with him. Um, it was a hindrance to me because I compromised and I took him when he wasn't ready to serve God. And it caused me to be up and down. It caused problems. And then we got married. We had children. And whenever he wanted to, you know, go to the bars and party and drink and things like that, you know, I just couldn't do it. So we ended up getting a divorce, and uh, this is his past. You know, he's today, he's living for God. He's 
sanctified and saved and delivered and totally changed. And I'm not bringing up his past. I'm giving you a testimony. So if you're single out there, make sure that you're not unequally yoked. If you're already married and your spouse is not saved, pray and believe for them. And God will bring them in. God will deal with them. And say, this is not words to tear down. Words of negativity. This is a testimony. So, anyhow, the Lord brought, brought both of us. Was dealing with both of us. And brought us back together. And we got married. And we decided to serve the Lord without turning back. Without looking back. So, everything that we could think of. That was wrong. We sought the Lord to make it right. Um, we decided to live a holy and a clean life. And I began to apologize to people I hurt and I offended. I began to... Um, we oh, we also told each other just the truth. You know, the truth of our past. The truth of everything. The start over. Um, we told people we were sorry. And we sought out to avenge disobedience to avenge disobedience and to bring every thought under captivity cast down all imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God so uh, my husband was rebaptized, and we began to pray and fast and we joined the church that's anointed we begin to go you know stay faithful to church uh, raising our children in church you know they begin to get rich in the word in Sunday school and we begin to serve the Lord faithfully and it's been some time so this is I said all that to say this so when I came back you know to the Lord he wants an unbroken relationship with us he don't want us I know there's times that you get weak and you want to give in and give out but you can't you know, you just have to keep walking with the Lord. You can't sit down. You can't stop. We have to apprehend this one thing. Letting go of our past. The things behind us. Pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in the Christ Jesus. And so, but I thought I was ready for ministry. And um, I thought I was ready for ministry. And the Lord is showing me how when we first come to God, we're still that tiny seed and we begin to grow and sometimes we're not ready for ministry like we think we are because you have got to have your character right your spirit right and you've got to love Jesus and love people and you know I thought I was ready for ministry and the Lord does use us to each level that we're on when you're first saved you start telling everybody I got saved, I got healed, delivered. You start telling people your testimony. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the words of our testimony. And then, you know, as you, a couple years go by, you have more monuments, more things, the devil under your feet. You know, you begin to tell that. And But sometimes we try to skip all that and go straight into ministry. But the Lord uses us level upon level, line upon line, precept on precept. And we have got to have the love for souls, the love for people. And we have to grow up in God. And that's what He's been showing me. So, the Lord has been, so it's been four or five years since we've been serving God continually, faithfully, steadfast, faithful, and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And the Lord was just showing me um, this past year to have love and compassion for His people, for others, for Him. And if we're not praying for the kingdom, if we're not kingdom-minded, if we don't have souls on our mind, if we don't have the Lord on our mind, then we're not really ready to minister. Because Jesus said that we are to sow the seed we're to water the seed, but He gives the increase. He gets the glory. He's to be high and lifted up. And we're to love His kingdom. We're to love people. Jesus loves souls. He gave the, the story of the prodigal son, the story of the lost coin, the story of the, the lamb that went astray and how He left that 99. And He had souls. 
He valued souls. And he came, the mandate on his life was to shed his blood at Calvary for healing and deliverance and salvation. And all he did that was for just one soul. He said, for whosoever. So he values souls. And we're to love him and his kingdom and souls. And so the Lord dealt with me to do little things for him. Card writing ministry, taking food to people, just praying for people. And the Lord dealt with me to pray for the kingdom. You know, and then I started teaching Sunday school. And the Lord dealt with me to really pray for those children. And to really um, seek the Lord for uh, a message to teach them. To speak into their lives. And to pray for them. And I have ministered the gospel uh, for different people at different you know, seasons of my life. But I'm still needing more love, more of Him, and there's still things I need before I can really, really be turned loose. He has to trust us. He has to trust us to seek Him, trust us to give Him the glory, trust us to love His church, to love people. Because He told Peter, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. He died for the church. He bled for the church for and for the lost. So he wants to really trust us to care for souls. And the disciples were transformed into apostles after they walked with Jesus. And after he discipled them and they were filled with upper room power. And they began to say, we are good stewards of the manifolds of mysteries and of grace and of the Spirit and the power of God. And uh, I'm just looking forward to dying out more to my flesh, crucifying, conquering, overcoming. And I want to be baptized in His love and to be after God's own heart and to have the desire, His desires, His thoughts, the mind of Christ, the love of Christ, and to bear forth His image, image to be that stimulative, to see His glory. And I want His will in my life. And whether if you're a tiny seed, or whether if you're growing into a plant, or whether if you're at that place that you're that mustard seed that the birds are coming and lodging in you, in Christ in you, I want to encourage you to keep telling your testimony Keep overcoming each stage of your life, each monument. And he's bringing us to a place of the manifestations of the sons of God. That we can come to the full stature, the full measure in Christ. That's what Ephesians teaches us. And he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And I just want to go where he's going. And to respond. To respond to the word, to the spirit, to his promises. And I'm just excited. And y'all pray for me. Pray for the will of God in my life. And that I can overcome. And I just pray that this testimony has blessed your heart. And um, the Lord wants us to. He, he brings us out of sin. He breaks yokes and chains. He brings us out of sin. But we still have to mature in Him. We still have to have the love of God. The love for the kingdom. For ministries. It has, we can't just want the microphone, want position. We've got to do what He wants, when He wants, and how He wants and flow with Him. And we have got to mature. And that's the whole thing. He wants an unbroken relationship with you. He wants you to mature. He wants you to come to a place that you can handle true ministry. That you can be a soul winner. That He can trust you. And we will get to that place if we... Set our faces flint and keep our foot on the rock and our mind made up and obey Him. And I just wanted to share that with you. No matter what stage of life you're in, just keep telling your testimony. Keep growing. Keep pressing. Keep walking. Keep overcoming. He will give the increase. God bless you all.